The time has come now to glue the fretboard onto the neck. In prior to this, we need to cut out a little recess in the back of the fretboard to take the uh, truss rod nut. And it's this nut area here that is a little bit higher than the truss rod, which has been routed in to be flush. So that's the extent of the slot we're going to cut. And this is going to be completely hidden once the fretboard is, is glued into position. Right, I've set up the jig for everything here. The first thing I've done is clamp the fretboard at this end. That allow, makes the fretboard uh, spring up a little bit. So at this end, I've created a, a little piece of uh, wood that just fits into the guide quite tightly, just to hold the end of the fretboard down, stop it springing up. I've got a guide here, which is going to guide the uh, cut of the uh, router. Uh, and then I've set my depth of cut to about half a millimetre. So I'm going to make a, a, a pass along there to, to cut this uh, slot and then I'm going to finish that off with a, a hand chisel to square the edges up just so it looks nice and neat. You won't ever see it but we'll always know. Now the manufacturers of the truss rod suggest that the nut is always placed at the bottom uh, and the reason I don't like to do that is that you're putting the nut right down at the bottom you've got to cut quite a deep slot for access to the truss rod nut which also means you've got to have it slightly wider to allow for the key to turn. Now when I've done it in with the nut at the top it allows us as we showed before to cut a slot and hold that in place it has a little lip on the edge there. It does mean that the nut stands proud so we have to create that little um, recess in the back of the fretboard but that's no big deal. So that's just the way I do it. It does mean that when you turn the truss rod, it will bend in the opposite way to a conventional truss rod. So you'll have to, if you turn it clockwise, you'll actually cre create a, a bowing in the, the opposite direction to what you would expect. So uh, we would have to bear that in mind while we're adjusting the truss rod. So now we're, going to, we're getting ready to fit the truss rod in the neck bit prior to the fretboard being uh, glued on. Now, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I have some very a uh, nice Teflon type lubricant and I'm going to lubricate all these threads uh, so that when it's in position there's minimal friction from the um, metal on metal and so when you're adjusting the truss rod it's purely against the back bow. I check that it fits in our, our slot again. Sometimes it's a bit big, sometimes a bit small. There we go, that goes in nicely. Make sure we've got free movement. Nice and free. Before we go any further, I'm just going to sand the fretboard and the neck flat with flat edge, just so that we've got it nicely keyed with a, not over, not the finest sandpaper, quite a fine sandpaper. Get it nice and keyed, ready for gluing. I mean, as a guide, the the white marks that we've put on for this slot once they've gone, which they've almost gone straight away, that's pretty much just. All we need to achieve really so that looks good to me we can see where the fretboard is going to be glued on it's going to be glued on you know this sort of central position so i'm just going to sand that i just want to remove that so we get a nice clean and fine straight flat surface it says flat already but we're just wanting to uh, clean it up so we get a good adhesion and I'm just going to clean everything up with some alcohol. I'm going to make sure you get some, see you get quite a bit of dirt coming from there. Uh, I want to make sure also that our slot is nice and clean. Get rid of any loose dust that's going to make the truss rod fit a little bit proud. Don't need to use much of this and it will evaporate off very quickly. That's the reason I use the alcohol. That's nice. And the same for the uh, back of the fretboard. Just put a bit of alcohol on there. I'm just going to uh, wipe the back of that down. And while that's drying off, we're going to fit the truss rod. We're now ready to put the truss rod into the slot. And I'm going to add a little bit of silicon sealant uh, just to stop it uh, rattling. It's unlikely it will rattle because once it's tightened up, it will fit tightly into the slot. But we're just going to dab a little bit here and there. And then I'm going to pop a little blob in the middle. And then we're just going to place that into the, the slot like that, like so. Okay, let it settle in there. Okay, 
and now we're ready to fit the fretboard. Well, we've already prepared the back of this. We need to put some glue on this and then clamp it in position. <clears throat> now, in order that I don't get any glue into the truss rod itself, because we don't get any into the thread here, I'm going to cut a piece of masking tape, a strip down the middle. So when I put the glue onto the fretboard, I can then take this masking tape away and we'll have a clean piece of uh, the centre of the board that doesn't have any glue. Not too much, don't want to put too much on because this will spread very thinly under the pressure. I'm just going to put a thin stripe down there, then I'm going to spread this with, uh, I'm just going to use a block of wood. Spread this glue over the fretboard so it's nice and even over the wood. It will spread nicely as we glue. It goes off quite quickly this, so we need to get it in position as soon as we can. Remove our masking tape and then over the end we can spread the glue because we have a position at the end here. We can spread the glue over the end like so. So we're going to turn it over. We're going to line it up with our marks at one end as close as we can. And then following the pencil lines at the side, we're going to get it on. And that's <clears throat> pretty much where we want to be. And then we can start to clamp. And it will move as we clamp, so we'll need to adjust this as we go, trying to keep it in place. Now for clamping, what I'm going to use is our radius sanding block. This will provide a nice even pressure over the fretboard and then we will need a small block of wood at the end, conveniently the one that it's got we use for gluing. That will be just the right width just to do the end. So we need to then get our clamps in place now. Okay, we can now put our block on. I'll try and get this as central as you can because this stops you uh, the pressure being applied in a skewed direction to the, to the fretboard. So as you clamp it, it will clamp down. So, use our clamps here, and this we're going to leave for a good 24 hours. 24 hours, to, the glue is, these, it says you clamp it for, I think, three hours or so. Let's read the instructions. Clamp for 30 minutes, don't stress for 24 hours. Well, I think we can just leave it for 24 hours so that there's no way it can be stressed. We're done. 